So the Steeds Mountain Traverse is basically over the crest of this fault block. So we're going from the north to the south, all the way over the ridge line. One side of the ridge is somewhat of a drop off the whole time. We're gonna stick as close to the ridge as we can. 75 miles, 20 some thousand feet of gain. And mostly pretty much all off trail. We got a long way to go. We're committed now, no turning back. Eh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. See my baby in the afternoon. When I leave here, gonna live with you. I'll be back on the first of June. Will you hold my boots? Oh, dandelion. My dandelion. Tell me when you've made your mind. All right, 5.2, we're starting now. So wake me up. Very auspicious start. We forgot sunscreen. Good thing I remember that. Okay, restart. All right, take two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Five <laughs> minutes later. Redo. Here we go. You say not to ride. Oh, damn the line. All right. Five minutes in, and we're about to tag her. First summit. Right as the light comes up over the hills. Beautiful sunrise this morning. It's gonna be a good day. Good night. <laughs> been coming up to Steen's running camp for the past 15 years now. I think there's like quite a bit of water in the refuge this year for once. Came up here as a camper in 1996. That one experience, like having that running camp experience kind of changed my whole life. I have now spent nine out of the last 10 summers up here on the mountain. My origin when it comes to trail mountain running started on that mountain at that camp nine years ago. My second year as a camper, uh, I uh, had a really good day on what we call the big day. He impressed me with his uphill ability, honestly, and ever since then I've looked at him as like a very confident mountain trail runner, and um, so we've done a lot of adventures together over the years. It doesn't look unreasonably far away. The start feels unreasonably far away. It does, man. The finish does not feel, it will feel unreasonably far away because we're 40 miles away. Right here, looking that way, and we're right. like, oh my God, we gotta go But that this far. feels a lot more doable than getting back. It's because we can see back. it. Yeah, it's because we can see okay. it. You ready for tomorrow? Uh, I think so. I've never done anything. It's... This is your longest run, right? Yeah, by 50%. I've only Ooh. done a 50. Mentally, every time I've thought about it in the last week, I haven't really dwelled on it. I've just been like, tell, I like, if my brain goes there, I'll be like, this is going to be really hard. Don't think about it too much, but just nope. when you get there, when it gets hard, remember that you said it was going to get hard. It's going to be hard. But don't worry about it too much until then. Nope. And as long as I've set myself that expectation. I'm trying not to treat it like a race. I'm just trying to treat it like a long day. Yeah. 
I mean, I still, still look up to him a lot. Maybe the reverence isn't quite there as much as it once was. Oh, that's Max King. Now I'm like, oh, that's Max King. He's old, I've beaten him in races. Yeah, I mean, Jackson's, he's a very strong personality as, as you find out. Uh, he just, he loves being out in the mountains and like just loves running, loves life and his outgoingness and his um, ability to just kind of enjoy the suffering that we put ourselves through. Um, he and I are a lot alike in that respect. Max had told me that this was an, an idea of his that he wanted to come here and do the 75 mile uh, Steens Mountain Traverse. And uh, I'm always looking for an excuse to, to do something cool like this with Max. Yeah, well, we're 10 miles in. We just got our first view of the snow. I like snow. Snow is good. Snow means we're getting closer to the top. Here. Means we're high, near the top. Yeah. Oh, there they go. Wow, horses! Take me away. Wild, wild horses. We'll ride them someday. Twelve miles, baby. Three hours and a half. Whew. I mean, the first twenty miles, you're you're kind of just. I don't want to say like not exceptional, but it's like getting to the mountain, right? We found a creek. We were out of water. At least I was, so nice to find some water out here. Beautiful little mountain stream. Probably clean enough to drink, but. So you're going up and over these big drainages. Um, there's a lot of kind of bushwhacking. You're not gaining a lot of elevation gain up to the mountain. You're just going in and out of these drainages, racking up um, vert and elevation gain, and then not gaining an altitude. Oh boy. Nope. Let's go around. Oh, I can only go through. Let's go. <laughs> it's so far. It's a little ways. You could ride and I could walk. You could. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna go through. Okay. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Man of the hour. Take him over the team, sacrificing himself for the good of the mission. I think that was probably worth it, yeah, Jackson? I'm so thermoregulated now, bro. <laughs> it was like knee deep the entire time. <laughs> I can see you, like, splashing around Everyone out there. <laughs> I'd like fall in a little, like, steeper hall and go like, oh. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I had fun. Well, I think I'm glad I went around, but I think Jackson had more fun than I did. And so it kind of just is like, it's all a big 20 mile warm up to where you're actually trying to get to, which is like on Steens Mountain and get up and over that. Rising more than 9,700 feet, nearly a mile above the deserts of Southeast Oregon, this area of geologic magnificence and natural beauty includes some of the most striking examples of glacial carving in North America. Yeah, I mean, Steens Mountain is this massive fault block mountain, and it's just an uplift. So you've got this one side that's real gradual, and you, you look at it from this side, and you think, you know, it's pretty unassuming. It's, it's not much to it. And then you get on the back side, and it drops away to the desert, 5,000 feet, which is pretty cool. And then on top of that, you have on the front side these massive gorges that were carved by glaciers, you know, in the last ice age. And that's kind of what gives the whole mountain its topography, this, these massive gorges that, you know, now we get to enjoy because they like foster these like uh, really unique ecosystems and stuff. Oh, it feels good.
So I was trying to keep like this three and a half mile an hour pace over those first 20 miles, just to kind of see if that was gonna like work itself out. I think what was remarkable though, was like how difficult that terrain is because it is all off trail. All right, quick break, uh, fix feet. Assess the damage so far. Jackson, where are we? Uh, we are 21 miles in. Feels like 50. But no. We're only 20. Not yet. Oh, okay. Feels like 35, maybe. <laughs> Feels more than 20. Yes. I think the last like two hours were, for me, the the best part. Like the first three or four hours. I was like kind of in a low right off the bat. It was just really hard. Like I was tripping all over the place. <laughs> you were kind of a mess. Yeah, it was a high gravity morning. And yeah, we just kept, it was like go up 1500 feet, go down 1200 feet, go up 1500 feet. We do, we were go going like up and down, up and down. And that was like Right. And then once kind we of kind of got out of that, we got kind of on the mid mountain, that oh. got a little cooler, got a little breeze. Peach rings are amazing. There was a lot of nice, easy alpine tundra. Oh, wow. Easy as in like we could maybe run 12 to 14 minute pace. Uh, <laughs> maybe. And like didn't have to walk everything. That right there is our last pitch until we get to Tiger Ridge. And so that's basically the end of the biggest climb that we've got on the trip so far. We made it to the crux. This is called the gun sight on the mountain. So you can see it, there's a little notch in Kiger rim. And you can see it from just about everywhere. And so we're coming down this technical part and then we gotta get up that over on that side. That is like the crux of this whole project. So been down it. Haven't been up it, but it should be easier to go up than it should be to go down. We got a long way to go. Got through the gun sight, the Kiger notch, which is the technical, technical crux of the day. Only fourth, fifth class section of the day. Now it's easy running. It's basically a road. By the time we hit the road, I was out of calories. I. <laughs> Like, I feel like I had kind of held myself together pretty well for like the first 40 miles where even if I was feeling a little slower, a little tired, I wasn't really imploding. Uh, but kind of once we got off the technical terrain along the Kiger, you know, the last like mile until we hit the road, I was just like, oh God, like this is, I'm in it, like this is hard. I think, I think what surprised us both was just how long that Kiger Ridge, or that Kiger Rim was and how long it took us to get across that.
<clears throat> I, I know that you bounced back from those lows and I knew kind of what a, the game plan was. It's like, okay, like I'm low on energy. I just need to get calories in me. So far, it is, has been long and hard and I underestimated everything, but that's okay. So this is, we're about to go into somewhat unventured territory for me. Uh, we're at 44 miles, the long, the most I've run at once is 53. Uh, and I mean, it's been really hard, but it's only hard. Like we're still feeling good. Vibes are good, not injured, not demoralized, not questioning <clears throat> my will to be out here. So it's pretty hard, but it's only hard. All right, Jackson, moving down, just left. Got the second half. We got this beautiful light. Gonna have an epic scene, steen sunset. Feel good now. Food, water, <clears throat> ready to go. Finish this baby off. We're committed now, no turning back. To be able to run across the entire Steens Mountain, for me is super cool. I mean, I've run around that mountain up on the higher areas for years all over the place, but I've never done something this scale. And so to do it to where we run over the entire mountain was really special to me. Having having a source of inspiration is, is I find, really key to, to being able to do hard things and overcoming the difficulty of it. Steen's Mountain, it's, it's a lot of sagebrush. It's a lot of brown. It's not the you know, Swiss Alps, it's not, uh, you know, the North Cascades, but it doesn't have to be because it's Steens. It's where, you know, I cut my teeth as a mountain runner. It's where, you know, I kind of got my start in with all this. It's where I, you know, met Max, you know, and, and all the opportunities that all that has led. The thousands of kids that I've coached through Steens Mountain Running Camp, um, the people that I know because of Steens Mountain Running Camp, like all connect to that mountain in some way. And that for me is kind of what makes that really special. Because of that uh, relationship um, I have with the mountain, it makes it a lot easier to overcome the difficulty uh, because it's like, in a way, I want to do the mountain proud for all that the mountain's done for me. Yeah, I don't think we ran a single step in the night. What was interesting and unique about this one was like how much we were trying to stick to a particular route. Because what we were on like a ridge and if we got down one side or the other, uh, that was when we would make a wrong turn and have to like bushwhack back over to that ridge, which made it really challenging. And so that was, I think, the unique part of like just doing this particular route at night. Uh, was just how difficult it was to stay on a particular route. Go for it. When you're awake at 3 a.m. on Steens Mountain, this this be what you're doing. Grammar. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> there you go. You're through. There you go. Eh, uh, yep, yep, that's it, yep. And the sun is risen. Uh, and we are exactly 24 hours in. My watch is 64 and a half miles. Uh, 17,000 and change feet of uphill. A little less downhill. Still got more to go. But I, I it's feeling, feeling attainable. And we're we're going to make it because we have to make it at this point. Well, like it feels not absurdly far. No. Looking over there at the mountains, it looks absurdly far. 
not for me. As soon as that sun came up this morning, like I was rejuvenated, like I felt way better. But at the same time, we were about mile 63 and we could look across this big valley um, to like where we had to go. Got to get down to the pass right in here and then climb up this ridge. And then once we're on this ridge, we got to bop along the ridge, tagging all these sub peaks. And at some point, that ridge is going to end and drop down to the highway where we're done, somewhere in there. And at that point, like, while I felt better because the sun was up, like, I was like, oh man, I can't believe we have like 10 more miles of just really hard terrain to go. Max, we're like 25 plus hours in. What are we doing running? Trying to get to the finish line. This is like the fastest we moved since yesterday morning. This time yesterday. I know. Want to get it done? Kicking it in. We are at summit of uh, the peaks. One of the last named high points on the Stains Traverse. We got a few more. A couple more. Oh, baby. Max and I are, we're making really good time for how long we've been out. Uh, see, we're 26 and a half hours in. But, I don't know. I feel spry. And Max is keeping up. Uh, but yeah, who knows, maybe if someone who hadn't been out 26 and a half hours was with us, they'd be thinking we're really slow. But I feel fast. It's a state of mind. Heck yeah, final summit. Wow. It's gonna feel so good to be done. Dean's Mountain in itself like, is phenomenal in terms of its scenery. It's gorgeous out there. But at the same time, just having that doesn't make it as special uh, as all those other connections do. And so when you bring all of that other stuff in, those connections to the people um, and the place and the history that you have up there, uh, it really makes it special and creates this environment that you can connect to on a deeper level. We're not saying everybody needs to go to Steens Mountain. It's definitely not going to be the place for everybody to do this sort of thing. But you got to find your own. And wherever it is out there, you can make that place special too. Well, uh, Jackson. Got her done. Harlan will be proud. I think so. Nice work. It's in the air. You feel that. It's bringing back images. Jackson, get down. Get down from there, Jackson. Hey, Jackson. This is for you. Hours. <laughs> he keeps saying things like this. I worry for his health. That makes sense. You can find it now. Whatever, you can you, whatever true, you said true before or did fact not, fiction. never made fact, any sense fact, at all. Fact, it makes fiction. sense. You were talking about babies. Subscribe to my OnlyFans. At Jay Brizzy Moneybags. This is adventure. This is adventure. We're definitely not saying like everybody's got to go to Steve's Mountain. 
But don't don't tell anyone about it. You can't interrupt me. It doesn't work like that. True. <laughs> okay, take two. Yeah. Well, I guess we did it. Did we? If you say so. We did it. Okay. I I, I trust you. You do. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me though. No, I bl I tr I trust and believe trust you. Trust or you believe. Both. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, so... They're not mutually exclusive. They're not? No. Okay. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs>